Well, with the winter crisis crippling the NHS, leading to 55,000 operations being postponed and extreme any waiting times, some critics say that it's now time to start looking for a long-term solution to the problems facing our health service. Theresa May initially claimed the NHS was geared up for the colder months, but quickly turned that into an apology. Uh, let's have a look at what she said. The NHS has been better prepared for this winter than ever before. Uh, we have put extra funding in. There are more beds available across the system. We will hope to ensure that those operations can be reinstated as soon as possible. I know it's difficult. I know it's frustrating. Uh, I know it's disappointing for people, and I apologise. We're joined now by Dr Louise Irvin from the National Health Action Party and uh, Kate Andrews, news editor at the Institute of Economic Affairs. Good to see both of you this morning. Everyone loves the NHS. Everyone wants it to be a success. We know there are brilliant people who work in it that keep it going. But there are clearly issues that have to be resolved. What's the answer? Your, your introduction talked about a long-term solution, and I think you know that's what's missing, is that people have not been um, planning properly for the NHS all NHS uh, staff and providers and the think tanks, everybody has been saying for years now, we need to improve NHS funding. And this is particularly acute last, all last year. We were How warning though, this. There isn't more money in the pot. Well, there is more money. It's a choice. The government makes a choice about how much it spends on health and other public services. Austerity is a choice and the degree of austerity. Other countries, comparable countries, have not chosen to go down the path that the UK has. Um, we, we have other ways that we could be funding the NHS and actually investing in the NHS gives a return to the economy because you're actually employing staff who spend their money in the economy and boost the economy. So it's a false economy to shut down and underfund public services. There you go, Kate. It's as simple as just giving it the money that it needs. I wish it were. Um, the NHS budget has been rising in real terms, but to your point, that has been at a much slower pace than it was previously. And I think that we do have to make some hard decisions about what we want to fund and what we want to prioritize. As you point out, there isn't a lot of money to go around unless we make those tough choices, start cutting other projects, and decide where we're going to refilter the money. We certainly can't overspend because that will fall on my generation. Money borrowed is money spent that has to be paid back. And, you know, the debt is already so high, we're going to have to pay that back down the road. So I'm, I'm very open-minded to reintroducing more funds into the NHS, but this has to be a secondary issue. There are other countries like Australia that, in terms of their percentage of GDP, actually are spending equal to less than the UK and getting better results. What I want to do is never look to the United States, that's not an ideal example, but look to Europe, look to Germany, Switzerland, look to Australia and New Zealand, look to Hong Kong and so Singapore. So what are they doing, what doing that we're not? There. Well, in Europe in particular, they have social health insurance systems where the government continues to provide universal access to health care. Privatization. No, not privatization. I think that's a word that's more associated mm. with the United States. Mm. Social health insurance systems have universal access to health care. Everyone can access the system. Everyone's topped up or given money to do so. But they have private providers that run the system because that's their comparative advantage. They have lower waiting times. They have so much better uh, cancer survival rates. And overall, it's a better system for okay. patients and workers. Well, let's put that to Louise. And what are your thoughts? You're a doctor. Well, we, we spend less per capita than Australia Canada, France, Germany, Sweden, Switzerland, we spend less than those countries. Mm -hmm. Those countries... Per capita meaning per, per person? Per head, per person, significantly people. less than all comparat comparable Western economies, firstly. If you pay by social health insurance, it, it's actually more bureaucratic. There's more costs involved in billing and filling in forms, etc., because different people have got different levels of cover and different mm -hmm. exemptions. Actually, the way we organise healthcare is more efficient. It's even um, it's simple and it's efficient. The problem with our system is not the way it's funded. It's it, not the methods, not the structure of the NHS. The problem is that it is seriously underfunded. This is not a winter crisis. It's an NHS funding crisis, but also a social care crisis as well because so we have to So Louise, do you, do you believe that if we were to get this, I think uh, we've had a few uh, people in meetings saying an extra four billion pounds is what we need a year. Do you think if we get this extra four billion pounds sort of indefinitely, then all of this concern we have the NHS will just melt away? Any large organisation has to look at how, how it provides care. So I'm not mm. saying it's the only thing that's needed, but it is the biggest thing that's needed. If we had, so if we've what's got great wrong staff with that £4 billion mm -hmm. coming from a system that you're suggesting, uh, where it's you know some kind of voucher system like they have in Switzerland? Or what's wrong with that £4 billion, billion okay. exactly what? coming from there? So what? that the people who can afford it kind of help those the system for those who can't? What, what problem is it going to to solve. We're still talking about 
paying money. Mm. Either we take it out of our left pocket of our trousers or the right pocket. We're actually still talking but about maybe people. Maybe that's an area that we can find consensus. Can finish my point? Um, those systems lead to greater inequity. If we look at the privatisation or the changes to uh, uh, social care funding, we're finding that poorer people are getting worse social care. Look at what's happened to NHS dentistry, and you can see how much that's declined since it's been largely privatised. But those are not good examples, I think, to compare to the rest of Europe. And maybe we can find consensus here, because I, as I said, I am open-minded to, to, to the idea that we want to prioritise more money going into the NHS. But when we have stories from this week about how a billion pounds are lost a year to missed mm. GP appointments, I find it very hard to believe that the idea is simply put more money in. There's actually a story from The Telegraph that was tweeted at me from 17 years ago, talking about the winter crisis and how the NHS couldn't cope. This is not a simple issue of the government underfunding the NHS. This is a long-term issue of the structure of the NHS, mm. which hasn't been updated for 70 it years. It is not uh, your description of a billion pounds wasted. Then I'm a GP, and it, it's certainly not the case that a billion pounds is wasted. But you will know how frustrating as a GP it well, is when people, because because Dr. Hillary comes in very often, he thinks that mm. we actually don't value the costs involved in the NHS. We have no understanding that if you go to see the GP and you just don't happen to turn up that has cost money and that has delayed you so you will have been through that situation where you think I'm not seeing people who are desperately needing to see me because someone booked an appointment and didn't turn up and that's, that's there's money involved there. Well there's, the best way to have efficient spending of NHS money is actually not to have privatisation we've had increased role of private companies since 2012 with the Health and Social Care Act and it has caused more fragmentation and more costs transaction costs so in fact it's an inefficient system in the Netherlands my partner at work is Dutch they are now spending, an average person spends 1,300 euros a year on their health insurance. They were promised it was going to be a little top up just to help the system, and, and that's a major yeah. cost. Yeah. So that's what we're going to see better here. patient outcomes as they do throughout the West and okay. throughout Asia. Sadly, we're not going to solve the, uh, the, the problem in the, the, these five minutes that we've had with you, but we do appreciate you coming in. Thank, thank you, thank you, very, you. Uh, thank you. very much, Dr. Louise Irvin there from the National Health Action Party, and Kate Andrews, who's news editor of the Institute of Economic Affairs.